Howdy gamers, old gamer guy here. Mars Horizon is one of those games that just kind of randomly showed up in the PlayStation Store. I had never heard of this game, but it looked intriguing and it was only about 20 bucks. So I bought it and what do you know, I like it. So I thought I would make a video showing my first hour of gameplay and it's going to be highly edited as you will see, there's a lot of reading involved. I'm not going to read every single thing, but I'll try to go over the most important stuff. And at the beginning of the game, it is January of 1957, and we are about to participate in the space race. You choose your space agency. They have different bonuses. I'm going to play as NASA, and I'm going to play on the Pioneer difficulty which I think they consider to be normal. The tutorial will be enabled and like I said you'll be able to tell there is a lot of reading involved. I'm not going to read it all but I will talk about the important stuff. So let's get to it. This is the solar system screen. At the beginning we only have access to Earth but as you go along you get access to the moon and Mars and all the rest. And then in the upper right hand corner we have our tutorial steps. Here we have the mission select screen. At the beginning we only have access to the test launch. So we can get an overview of the mission. Uh, it is a milestone mission which are the important ones for advancing your space program. They will sometimes require additional research and then there are request missions which become available as you complete milestone missions and they are only available for a limited time. If there are research requirements for your mission they will appear in the upper right hand corner. And then here we have a way to monitor the space race because we are competing with all of the other space agencies. Now we move on to planning the mission and first of all we need a vehicle to launch our mission into space. This first mission is the test launch. So we are building what is called a sounding rocket and it is the only design we have available at the beginning of the game so no big decision to make here. Eventually this becomes more complicated because you will have payloads uh, involved with your mission and so the booster will have to have enough uh, power to lift the payload into space. But this first mission has no crew and no payload so it's not complicated at all. You can see there's only a 25% launch reliability, which is not great, <laughs> obviously. And it is possible for missions to fail and explode while launching. You will get experience points either way, so that's good. So now we have chosen the vehicle, and so we must build the vehicle. This one will cost us 80,000 credits and I think it takes about two months to build this thing. We're still in January of 1957, keep that in mind. We can see the chances of a critical failure or a negative event, launch success or a positive event. So now we're building that rocket, but all of a sudden our engineers are like, whoa, Hold, hold everything, we need a small launch pad and we don't even know how to build a small launch pad so we need to research a small launch pad. So this is the building research screen. There is also a mission research screen and a vehicle research screen. But here we are choosing to research the small launch pad. Up in the upper right hand corner you can see our credits and our income of credits our science and our income of science and then our support tier. Tier 1 is the lowest. 
the more support we gain, the higher the tiers will go, and the more funding we will get. So those things obviously go up from completing missions successfully. Then in the lower right-hand corner, we have events. We have a funding review in 12 months, and Akhenaten will be complete in two months. In the lower left-hand corner, we can review past events. So all this time, we've been in January of 1957, but we are about to advance time. We can advance a month or to the next event. I'm going to choose to go to the next event by hitting the triangle button. Our research into the small launch pad is complete, so now we can build it. And here we have a look at our base. We started off with a headquarters and a, and a hangar. And so now we are trying to decide where to place the small launch pad. There are adjacency effects some positive, some negative. There's also terrain which can be cleared. Obviously that costs you extra money as well. But I'm gonna put our launch pad right here and we'll get a small bonus to our vehicle build time. Now our small launch pad is complete. And the construction of our test rocket is complete. So now we can begin to prepare for launch. We have to actually set a launch date If there was a crew, we might have to assign crew and also train the crew, but this test launch is unmanned, uncrewed, so we can just skip to selecting the launch date, the all-important launch date. There are optimal launch windows and suboptimal launch windows and invalid launch windows. So obviously it's best to select an optimal window if you can. But in the lower right hand corner you can see another indicator of the, the status of the space race. And so you might want to choose a suboptimal window to uh, compete with the Soviets or whoever. May, June, and July are showing as being optimal. At least that's the way it looks to me. Uh, I'm clicking on May right here, but for some reason it's automatically setting my launch date to April. I'm not really sure uh, why that is. Maybe it's because it's the tutorial. But the April test launch has been approved. So now we need to just advance to the next event, which should be the launch. So here we are. It's a very exciting day for the American space program. We are ready to launch our first test rocket in April of 1957. The atmosphere in mission control is electric as we prepare for launch. Conditions are good, so launch reliability has improved a little bit. Off. 
We have liftoff. It's a proud day for all Americans. Or most Americans, I guess. And it was a secure launch. Nothing special, nothing good, nothing bad. Our sounding rocket got some experience points. We gained some support points and some science points. So that was the very first mission. And uh, I thought I would go ahead and give you a look at the research tree for the missions. And as you can see, it's fairly extensive. Eventually we get manned missions and planet flybys and the space station. All the way down to a manned Mars mission and the Orion spacecraft. So we are now jumping forward in time to June of 1958, so a little bit over a year. I have built at least one more building. I've done some research on different vehicles, and we are ready to launch our next milestone mission, which is to launch an artificial satellite. Once again, conditions are good, so launch reliability is a little bit improved. Five, four, three, two, one. We have lift off. And once again, we have a successful launch. We almost made it up into the green part of the scale, but we had a secure launch and that's all we can really ask for. Nothing exploded. Our Vanguard booster got some XP. Our Viking upper stage got some XP. But now we have a satellite in orbit. And we have a couple of objectives. We will be issuing commands to the payload. I guess you would call this a mini game. And it's, it's kind of funny watching this footage now because at the time while I was playing, I was kind of confused. You'll probably be able to tell that I had a hard time <laughs> making up my mind. And now that I'm looking at this footage, I'm thinking, it seems really obvious what they want me to do. I've played video games for so long that I should be able to interpret these visual prompts, but uh, for some reason at the time, I guess I was overthinking it. But basically, I have four turns to achieve our objective, uh, two objectives actually, up in the upper left-hand corner. Two of the red icon, two of the blue icon, We have a finite amount of power, but we can also recharge power. The blue icon is planetary observation. The red icon is short range comms. So we need two of the red, two of the blue to achieve our objective. And then if we get three of each one, we get a 50% bonus reward. <laughs> but you can see I'm trying to click on the red areas on the menu which you know my video game senses should tell me those are are not valid at the moment but i clicked on a couple of things at the top there i've issued some commands hey what do you know they looked like they were relatively successful there was a control breakthrough in mission control so we get 
an additional one of the blue icon. So that's good. But then we experienced atmospheric interference, which would give us a penalty unless we decide to spend an extra bit of energy to resist the event, which I'm doing, I think. So at the moment, it says I have achieved one of my objectives, objectives but you will see as I go, uh, depending on what move you make, I might have to spend one of those to achieve something else. So if you pay attention to the upper left-hand corner, you'll see right now there's a green check next to the red icon, but that will disappear. Probably. Uh, I know it happens once or twice during this whole sequence of events here, but I've got three turns left to achieve my objectives and hopefully my bonus objectives. So right now it's showing that I have both objectives achieved and I am recharging power, but actually executing the command made the blue icon not achieved that objective is now no longer achieved. And now it's achieved again. So you have to keep an eye on that as you go. I've got two turns remaining. So I have two turns to try and get to that bonus objective. What will I choose? We're going for some data transmission and some magnetic field analysis. So we got a little something something out of that. So now in the, in the upper left hand corner, it shows that the red icon objective is complete, but not the blue icon. And now the blue icon has been completed again, and we have reached our last turn. So I've got one turn to get one more of both. So let's go for some more magnetic field analysis. And we recharged our power. And let's see what the result will be. Did I achieve the bonus? Yes, I did. So it's a proud, proud day for all Americans, especially the ones in mission control. And that will do it for my first hour of gameplay. Uh, I like this game. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks very much for watching.